In our series of promoting living traditions, today we bring you the only museum of its kind in the world. It has a big treasure house of jewelry sourced from folk, tribal, rural, urban, and even modern, though it is all antique. Each one is a collector's item. Rajiv Arora and Rajesh Ajmera, very early in life, began collecting old artifacts and pieces so that they could preserve, promote and bring to the world the great treasure house that we have here in India. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. These frames here are just not of women with jeweled and silver jewelry, but are ageless stories of tradition custom, culture, and silver jewelry. So let us see what ageless stories our artisans, though unknown, have carved in silver for us to preserve and promote and so happily curated by our Kali Museum. These are cuff bracelets from Gujarat with chaste and incise ornamentation. Women in Gujarat are fond of wearing broad cuff bracelets, often in conjunction with a series of thinner ones. These cuff bracelets with specially fine chase work of scrolling leaf and floral patterns, definitely inspired by colonial motifs. necklace of seven units on a strong loop and loop chain from Bikaner. Women of the Khati community from Bikaner who were originally ex experts of mounting silver foil on wood usually wear this type of necklace. This elaborate foliated silver plate decorated in the Theva technique from Pratapgarh, Rajasthan depicts two scenes while the outer green band depicts scenes from royal hunts, the inner blue showcases court scenes. The central panel supports a profusely decorated heptagonal container probably used to serve condiments. Gold foiled embedded earlobes, ornament worn by Meghawal community at Banna area of Kutch, Gujarat. Not only earlobe ornaments such as these, but also armlets or ornaments for the long hair plates for girls are made in this technique. This is called Kanthala, neck ornament from Bikaner. The central amulet box of this necklace has a depiction of Krishna flanked by his gopis painted behind glass, set into a frame of silver which is edged with a fringe of jingle bells. A row of nine other square silver amulet boxes are strung on the same cord. Such a necklace with charm boxes is worn by a devotee after fulfillment of a vow and therefore cannot be transferred to any other wearer. This is a silver necklace with amulet box from Shekhavati and Bikaner areas, Rajasthan. This silver amulet box is connected with loop and loop silver chains made of four units at each side with square center piece and quasi oval end pieces having red, blue, green, glass set in. This neck ornament is usually worn by men who keep an auspicious symbol or a token of the revered deity in the amulet box. This is a hoop earring. The fine granulation work and part gilded make these hoop earrings a treasured possession of the well-to-do women in Kutch, Gujarat. This solid cast pendant earrings, locally called as Loria, from Porbandar region, Gujarat, is made of an octagonal cube with hemispherical dome, 
joined together by a granulated ornamental band is part of a mer woman's regular jewelry this is a pair of gold plated hexagonal goblets decorated in the theva technique again from pratapgarh rajasthan a plethora of varying complementary narratives adorn these unique hexagonal goblets the first pass depicts images of a royal hunt a royal recreations amusements the goddess of learning saraswati besides celestial women or apsaras the second pass invokes religious scenes of lord krishna and his beloved radha musicians hunting scenes besides other courtly pleasures this is man's gilded ear studs with intricate granulation work locally called as vario delicate granulation work is in gold and silver is usually the hallmark for men's earrings of the bharward shepherds of saurashtra bharward men are generally fond of wearing plenty of jewelry even more so on festive occasions such as fairs when they bedeck themselves with silver wristlets various types of earrings and ear ornaments finger rings necklaces and amulets waistbands and anklets These two dancing figures were both made in Jaipur, Rajasthan. To the uninitiated, one would never know that they are wine flasks locally called as chuski. They are topped up through the headdress and poured through the raised right hand. The figures stand on circular foliage, patterned plinths in a dance known as kathak. An important feature of a Kathak dancer's outfit was the number of pleats in a fully pleated skirt. The more pleats, the more dramatic the whirls and the twirls added to the visual spectacle. This is of greater significance as Jaipur has had a timeless connect with Kathak. This is a necklace with eight painted mini frames of Lord Shri Nath and one photo frame in the center of a royalty strung together. The beautiful confluence of jewelry and art from Udaipur, Rajasthan. This truly magnificent spice box of gilded silver from Rajasthan is an ode to the peacock, India's national bird. In carefully enameled detail, we see birds feeding and frolicking amidst green foliage. Each image is enclosed within a floral border in a blue frame, much the color of the bird itself. The stand has 6 compartments. each with a hinged lid that's topped with a white sapphire the bulbous handle consists of a central flower surrounded in turn by six flowers each flower with six petals this is a silver bracelet locally called as gajredar bangri it's from kota and bundi area of south rajasthan because of its rich artistic workmanship a bangle is worn at the beginning of the series of bangles so that it is seen and appreciated in the full the box shaped finger ring from rajasthan was very popular in the middle ages the domed top of this ring can be opened it is believed that when attacked the women of the rajput communities could quickly take out the poison which was stored in there to commit suicide rather than compromise to the enemy this is a buckle used on a belt with gilded work set with glass pieces the kind of work which is done in goa it is very apparent that this piece has a portuguese influence and must have been worn by men then rajput women wear this five unit chain bracelet from jodhpur This bracelet is worn together with similar ornaments having inset color glass pieces used in necklaces armlets and and others 
This is a hinge bracelet with inset glass pieces from Barmer. Again, South Rajasthan. This inset color glass piece match well with the colorful embroideries of women in that area. This is a baju band from Rajasthan made in silver. The jewelry worn on the arm carries decorative but also a protective function. Women working in remote fields were very often attacked by wild animals. This serrated hollow armlet with ball parameters is the characteristic ornament of Potter women living in the Mewar region of Rajasthan. Gilding gives an added touch of class and precious. Silver earrings locally called as Nagali from Rajasthan. They are worn by farmers. The first pair given to the bride by the father. The design which does not directly resemble a snake is supposed to have been derived from a mushroom under which the snake can hide. This is an amulet from Rajasthan. Snakes regarded as signs of fertility and male procreativeness. These amulets are were worn by men. This gold nose ring is worn by Bishnoi women. This Bishnois of farmer class are known for their high ethics and ecological lifestyle with attention to the rights of animals and plants. This is a turban ornament called Sarpech from Rajasthan. It has been made in silver and colored glass. These are worn in weddings on special occasions by men. This is a man's waistband made of interlinked coins from Maharashtra or Gujarat. Silver coins, which are a mark of wealth, were often used in jewelry, especially by the affluent class. This is a pair of hairpins hailing from Goa made with stamped flowers and fine filigree work. This is another hairpin from Goa, very popular amongst the Portuguese girls and it has a vast stamp of the Portuguese influence. This is a bachuban from Bikaner. The silver plate of this armlet is slightly curved to fit the contours of the upper arm. The depiction of the deities in a very typical Rajasthani folk art manner such as Shiva, Ganesha and Hanuman indicate that this armlet was worn by a religious person. These are Gokru earrings that is thorn like from Rajasthan. It has a supporting chain which is locally called Shakli. This is a necklace with pendant amulet case. This red pom-poms indicate that this woman's necklace from Jaisalmer is to be worn on a wedding day and other festive occasions like all married women do. These are anklets also called as kariya from Rajasthan. They are to be worn together and this brass box is used to keep and store them safely. This is a hollow silver toe locally called as hasli. Women of all communities in the Shekhavati Bikaner area generally wear this ornament round their neck and it is one of the most sought after pieces by women. This is a burla from Rajasthan. It acts as an identification mark which is specific with the individual ethnic group, namely Rajputs, farmers, shepherds, traders. Outer covering for Jain 11 Tirthankara Shreyan Snath called Agniyan from Gujarat with an emblem rhinoceros in the center of the plinth. It is made with the plinth in Padmasana. It is decked with ornaments from head to toe intricately with leaves and floral patterns. It has a halo behind the head with intricate patterns. Queen Trishala, the mother of Mahavira, the 24th Tirthankara of Jainism and wife of the Jain monarch Siddharth of Kundagagra of present-day Bihar. According to Jain scriptures, Trishala has 16 dreams to which, when told to her husband, the king invites the scholars to interpret them. <clears throat> According to the scholars, these dreams meant that the child would be born very strong, 
courageous and full of virtue around the shrine we have silver representation of 14 mother trishala's dreams gunpowder was the primary form of ammunition prior to the introduction of bullets powder flasks were used in order to store and carry while protecting gunpowder from the damp indian powder flasks are often elegant and a work of art exhibiting intricate carving just as in this looped gunpowder flask from gujarat decorated with geometrical patterns and leaves this is a mukhlinga in the form of a bhaira face one of the form of lord shiva it is made in silver hammer sheet his expressions show anger with raised mustaches he wears stylized karnapatra behind his ears and a floral stud in both ear lobes his third eye is depicted on tilak he also wears a crown made with foliage the silver lingam cover would have been placed over the lingam between periods of puja worship traditionally hindus regarded silver as a ritually pure metal The Virbhadra plaque from Maharashtra in silver shows excellent attention to detail. Virbhadra an incarnation of Shiva was created up after Shiva's wife Sati was not invited to the great yagna by her father Daksha. Greatly humiliated she threw herself in the sacrificial fire. When Shiva heard of his wife's death he tore her hair from his head and threw it on the ground. Virbhadra a great hero warrior arose from this hair he cut off daksha's head in his rage and hurled it into the sacrificial fire the figure to virbhadra's left probably is bhadrakali virbhadra's consort her hands are in anjali mudra a nandi and lingam adorn the upper portion of the plaque a kurti mukh mask adorns the top this is a silver lingam cover Mukhlinga from Maharashtra or Karnataka his third eye is visible above the tikka on his forehead he's wearing round kundala in ears he's wearing his uncut piled hair with a snake coiled on top in the style of a yogic ascetic in it has inscriptions on lower flat edge written in devnagri miniature jain temple in shape of disc called as gatta ji from rajasthan it is decorated with basra pearls the inner portion has frames paintings of nemeenath second jain tirthankara and parshivnath 23rd tirthankara on the right these are flexible silver anklets locally known as paise with screw closing and fringe of balls from rajasthan It is made with interlocking thick silver wires in a circular motion which makes the band flexible and easy to wear with silver flower stamps and hanging balls throughout the circumference front is pin clasped with a downturned lotus mound on the interlocking and needless to say they were very popular with most women these are silver earrings from junagarh gujarat locally called as kundal or pokhenu worn by kanbi bhavar patel and totio women a classic indian type called an ear leel in western jewelry literature it is commonly depicted on ancient indian frescoes paintings and images of deities originally it was made of a strip of palm leaf formed into a spiral a style still worn by tribal women in bihar and greatly in demand in silver by our modern divas this is a silver head ornament known as choga from rajasthan worn by bheel women loaded with bunches and borders of hollow balls This is a rigid silver armlet also called a bazu tawis from Gujarat with attached amulet case as we all know tawis were worn by women and children to ward off the evil eye as they are still done in some places 
These kurta buttons worn by women in northern India are traditionally worn on a long upper garment known as kurta in combination with loose trousers. The garment is buttoned with an elaborate chain made of multiple units. The three rosette-like units have small knobs at the back which are placed into the buttonholes. A small rectangular trunk shaped casket of scroll and open work design that can confidently be attributed to a Goan master craftsman production. The dense decorative scheme covers the entirety of the case, consisting enameled flowers which is very rarely found in this type of workmanship. The casket stands on four feet. To date, it has been replicated in every possible medium – silver, brass, wood and many others. This small octagonal container of gilded silver was made in one of the several royal courts of India using the ancient enameling technique of Amplewe. The container and its lid are covered with patterns of blue flowers and green leaves. It was made specifically to hold the essential ingredients that make up pan, areca notes, lime paste, spices and betel leaf. The areca nut which is actually more like a berry, is sliced and spiced with cloves and cardamoms and wrapped in a leaf from the piper beetle tree. When chewed, its mildly intoxicating effect imparts feeling of warmth and well-being. Kings and noblemen had dedicated servants whose only job it was to carry the container and prepare the wrap and serve. This is a beetle leaf container made in the northern Rajasthani town of Bikaner. It's a delicate silver bowl that's been pierced, soldered and bound with straw. There's a lion motif on the top of the lid and a floral foliage design runs along the base. This is a silver necklace locally known as Kantilo or Hullar from Padhadari, Rajkot district, Gujarat of 16 die stamped simulations of old silver coins and a central pendant gibro in yoni shape, strung on knitted wire tubes, kajodi, with back hook page. And this design is still very popular amongst the modern day women. This is a necklace Sita Rami from Jaisalmer made with five strand chains having flower mounts. These chains have triangular silver plates as supports on top and end. It also has a rectangular support in center embellished with colored glass. Necklace has a perforated tubular pendant with five loops and hanging cast balls in front. This design now is greatly replicated in gold and other precious stones for the modern day women who love jewellery.